Clayton Randall, thanks for taking some time with us. Looks like uh, everything's going great in the new uniform. Tell us about your first experience as a Rocky. Yeah, I'm loving it. You know, uh, spring training's about 10 minutes from the house, and uh, I feel like I don't look too bad in purple. And the uh, team's <laughs> off to a good start, so it's all good. Yeah, you're pulling that off nice. Hey, let's talk about that catch. <laughs> Robbing a homer, uh, I think you made some comments afterwards, something to the degree of you're not a huge leaper, so you were grateful that the wall was only as high as it was. Tell us about that play. Uh, yeah, you know, definitely. Corey got a hold of it, hit it real high, and, you know, I was playing in the uh, left center gap, but uh, it was high enough that I had a chance to be able to run and get under it. And, you know, the stars aligned, and, uh, you know, I got to the wall and was able to time it perfectly and get up and pull it back. Learning how to play the outfield uh, at Coors Field has got to be a different thing for anybody coming there for the first time. And we've always been told, you know, you've got to be just as aware of the stuff hit in front of you as the stuff that gets behind you because it's so spacious. Give us some of the trade secrets of playing outfield in Denver. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, when I got called up with St. Louis, we came out here for the first time in 2014 or 2015. And John Jay told me that, uh, you know, whenever a fly ball's hit, you play behind it, but play like it's three or four more steps back. And uh, surely enough, it's very accurate, you know, coming out here and taking BP for the first time uh, day before opening day in our workout. Uh, I, line drive was hit and I thought I was behind it and I definitely had to take a couple more and barely snagged it. So uh, you definitely have to make sure you play behind it and exaggerate it. And then definitely on those balls, there's a lot of big swings that the balls can bloop in. Obviously it's a big outfield, so we play pretty deep, but uh, you know, you just gotta be on your toes. You never know. Hey, speaking of BP, do you do different work when you guys are at home in terms of whether you're hitting inside or outside, whether you're hitting off a tee or not? Because I, I would imagine that you could you know, get pretty big BP muscles uh, when, you, when you work out in Denver before a game. Yeah, definitely. I feel like, uh, you know, it's one of those things that you just got to stay within yourself. Uh, it's so easy to hit with, with KB and, and Crony and, and Mac and some of the other guys that are driving the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, you got to stay within yourself and know that the swing you work on in BP uh, needs to translate to the game, and it's not about just hitting homers. Um, so you definitely got to stay within yourself, work on hard line drives, and know those will translate in the game. Your starter tonight, Kyle Freeland, uh, congratulations are in order. We understand he just uh, did a long-term deal that the Rockies announced today. Uh, is he buying dinner? And if not, what is the pregame spread in the home clubhouse tonight? I, I think KB's got a few dinners before anybody else starts starts paying for any. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Well-deserved. I just saw him actually right now. He's starting tonight, so he came in a little later and said congrats. And, uh, you know, I'm happy for him. And uh, we'll definitely get an off day on the road somewhere where uh, he can get one for the boys. Hey, before we talk about some of your, your off-the-field pursuits, uh, I'm reminded that when we had Chris Bryant on the show last week, he had never heard of the Rocky Mountain Oyster. Has that gone away? Are you familiar with that, or is, is it gone? So the only reason I even know what it is was because somebody prepped me on it, knowing that they figured you would ask uh, about it on this call. So uh, I'd never heard of it before, but heard of it now, and I definitely haven't tried it, and honestly don't really – plan on trying it if that sounds bad no that sounds good uh, that's a very <laughs> solid course of action for you um, look not unusual as, as we take you away from the field a little bit not unusual for uh, a baseball player to spend off seasons hunting or fishing um, but you landed something was it this off season you reeled in this enormous marlin that we have an image of my goodness yeah that was a couple off seasons ago that was a fun fishing trip deep sea trip I mean, how long did it take you to get that thing in the boat, and was it as heavy as it looks? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was It was about probably 40, 45 minutes. Uh, yeah, that was in Cabo two off-seasons ago, and, and uh, we, we found a charter boat that took us out, and they actually said that was one of the bigger fishes that they've seen, bigger marlins that they've seen caught. Uh, you know, ironically, that same trip, my wife always jokes with me that I got the biggest, but it was kind of, it looked old. It didn't look very pretty, and, and she always said hers was uh, a little more pretty than mine. So uh, <laughs> we actually both caught one, so it was a fun trip. You had to reel that thing in. It didn't, like, present itself and jump into the boat 
the way was this is this a seal that came in and was this this off season <laughs> no that was actually the same trip that was coming back and uh i guess they have the fish on the back of the boat so when they're driving coming back in the seals know that if they have extra bait that they didn't use that they can come on board and get it and uh you know we thought that was super cool so uh, clearly i posted it but yeah they're swimming along with the boat and then just hop on the back it's it's really cool that's amazing you know your your career has been cool to watch and 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 for a lot of fans that are familiar with it, uh, it started way back when, when you were a star at the Little League World Series with a swing that is so similar to your pass at the baseball now. Do you ever go back and look at this stuff and think, wow, if you could have told this kid he'd be playing in the big leagues, he'd be pretty happy? Yeah, I, I wouldn't believe it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that was back when baseball was easy. Uh, you know, I felt like I was a little bit better than most at that age, and now – now everybody is really, really good. Uh, but yeah, that was fun. You know, that was the first experience of being able to play in front of big crowds and, and being on national television and kind of being a celebrity. You know, they treat you like you're in the ma major leagues uh, when you're in Williamsport. So that was really fun. And, you know, definitely from there here, it's been a journey. It's been a fun one. It's been a wild one. Another cool thing about your career is your draft status. You were a first round draft choice. You were drafted by the Angels. They had back to back picks and it was Randall Gritchick and Mike Trout. Do you ever think, wow, what if I'd stayed there and they hadn't traded me to St. Louis? You'd be playing next to Mike Trout for 10 years. Do you ever play games with yourself that way? Uh, you know, I try not to, but I do, I do think about, you know, what it would be like to play next to him and play and just see him play on a, on a day in and day basis. You know, I've talked to tons of guys that play with him and say it's something special to watch. Obviously, everybody sees it and uh, it'd just be cool to be in the dugout and be on the field next to him for that long a time. That's for sure. Hey, Randall, we appreciate the visit today, man. Uh, go get him today against the Phillies. Thanks for taking some time with us. Congrats on the early success you've had with your new club. And uh, we look forward to maybe checking in with you down the road. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.